So, <coughs> before we get started, uh, sorry about the delay. We had a bit of uh, a hiccup, but then uh, the guys from ESA really helped us. Thank you very much for that and uh, for rescuing the day. And uh, I'll start by talking a bit about myself. Well, I'll, I'll only spend one minute talking about myself, really, and then go to the presentation. But uh, my background is in uh, computing. I work full-time as a software engineer at Intel. And uh, my job mainly revolves around optimizing applications to run best on our platforms. And uh, on the other side, I want to be an artist, but I feel like I don't yet have it, so I you know, jump at every opportunity that I have to just uh, speak with artists, spend time with artists, and hopefully one day I'll also be able to you know, become an artist and uh, develop cool stuff. So today I'm uh, going to talk about uh, Krita. Some of you might have uh, you know, interacted with the Krita application upstairs already. So Krita is um, you know, open source, free, drawing application, painting application rather, but you can also use it for drawing. And uh, we've done some work with Krita around HDR. And uh, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, Krita guys are not here today. They were here yesterday. But uh, I'm very pleased to say that this is one of the first worldwide leading applications to offer full HDR experience. And uh, this has been uh, recognized by VESA as well. So if you have time and you want to check it out, you can check out VESA's uh, website. And uh, a little bit about HDR. This might not be new. Most of people already here know what HDR is about. What HDR is about. So it's about uh, you know combination of uh, bright colors and uh, deep blacks and uh, wide color gamut going away from the you know limited uh, color range that we've always had in the past. And uh, it sounds like, you know, it has been there for a long time, but that's not the case. When you start getting deeper into HDR, you discover there are a lot of uh, fake HDRs around. And uh, this is not one of those fake HDRs. And that's why, you know, we are very excited and uh, happy to have worked with uh, Krita on this. And uh, I'll just quickly go into a quick, you know, distinction between uh, SDR and uh, HDR. So if you look at uh, the picture being projected, on top we have SDR and uh, below we have HDR. So HDR really strives to bring realism to art. So if you look at the steps involved in uh, HDR, from capture, production, and display, the final output looks almost the same as the original input. And that's what HDR really strives to do. And if you look at the top portion of the presentation, it's SDR. We see that the colors are dull. It's not a real replica from the original scene. So what we're trying to do is, you know, help artists to come up with artwork that is as real as technology can support today. And that's why we're having this uh, discussion about uh, HDR. And uh, this is just you know, a sample HDR versus SDR picture. And you, know, you won't see the wow factor here, because this is through the projector. Projector is traditionally SDR. And uh, this can just give you a hint of what it will feel like to experience true HDR. And later during the presentation, we will uh, you know, try to come up with uh, something on uh, the software itself. And then you guys can uh, see it straight from the screen. But this just helps to give you a hint of how different SDR is from HDR. And by the way, if you have any questions, you can ask me as I, you know, as I go on. And uh, I now want to talk a little bit more about Krita in depth. And uh, I've already, you know, interacted with a few guys in the room, and uh, people 
most people know Krita. How many people don't know Krita, just by a show of hands? Okay, so this specific slide is tailored for you guys. <laughs> so Krita, you know, is a free open source painting application. You can download it from uh, krita.org, and it's made by artists for artists. And, you know, just like most open source software, we have different people contributing to Krita code base. And uh, in that sense, it's re it has really become a popular painting application because the intended users participate in authoring of the software itself. And it's available on uh, OS X right now. We have um, installation for Windows as well and uh, Linux. But then for this specific demo that we have today, the HDR bit, unfortunately only works on Windows at the moment. But we do have uh, you know, ongoing efforts to make it possible in Linux. And Intel is really is heavily focused on this. So it's just a matter of time we'll be having this in Linux as well. And uh, what makes Krita so cool is that it supports different formats. So if you're an artist and uh, you know, you've created some HDR artwork, you can be able to save it uh, you know, in different file formats. And these different file formats can be you know, used or imported from other softwares, for instance, Blender. And uh, you, know, you carry on from that point. And you can also just uh, you know, save them for the purpose of viewing them with any image viewer that is uh, true HDR capable. So <clears throat> once you've done the HDR bit, it does not end there. You, you, know, you still have the, the, the leeway to play with a file, port it, use it in other, other third-party softwares, etc., etc. So this slide is just, uh, you know, well, HDR is there. So what about it? So I've been interacting with a few artists in the room. And uh, some of you might uh, see stuff on the slide that uh, I've come from uh, <laughs> you guys. And this is uh, you know, real feedback collected over the last two days from the artists who are interacting with uh, Krita on, uh, on uh, the ASA stand upstairs. And uh, you know, in the past, really, artists were limited. And uh, because everything is in, was in SDR. So, what we're trying now to do is to move away from that and support it from a technology point of view. And right now, as an artist, you've got wider range of colors that you can play with. You don't have to compromise in the, you know, the, 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 the tone of the blue you want. So for instance, if you want a specific blue that has specific light component, you should be able now to get that thanks to the application and then uh, what essentially this means that you know your blacks become darker if you want, and your whites become whiter. And <clears throat> there's so much new flexibility afforded by this. And I've uh, I've collected a few you know comments and a few quotes that uh, some guys have uh, said after playing with the application. And uh, the one that strikes me the most it uh, is the one that came from uh, an artist called uh, Wolfera. She said that. Uh, it feels like you are painting with new colors. So that's really cool because, you know, in the past this was not possible, but this is now being made possible. And it can only mean that if you have several colors, new set of colors to play with, then the quality of your artwork improves dramatically. And then uh, <coughs> the other one that uh, also really struck me is uh, another one coming from uh, an artist who says, you can paint with the exact color that you want. So you don't have to compromise on the shade of color that you want. And uh, yeah, you just get it done. So this also is another HDR sample. It doesn't look what it's supposed to look like because uh, the, the, the setup is all SDR. But shortly, I'll be showing you how it looks like on the display over there. And uh, in terms of uh, hardware support, I'll only talk about, um, there are different hardwares out there to that support HDR, full HDR-like experience. 
but I only talk about what I know, and uh, it happens to be what I know is what I've worked on most, and it's on uh, Intel platforms. So on Intel platforms, uh, you could uh, you know experience true HDR from our seventh generation's uh, processors and above, and uh, just using the us the latest Intel graphics and uh, Intel uh, graphics drivers, you should be able to you know experience uh, true HDR. So I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and uh, you know show you this. Or rather, I think the best thing would be to have an artist do it. Anyone who's uh, volunteering? Please, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, what am I just paint on the screen? Yeah. So use, the, use the mouse. All right. Any lefties here? You guys able to see? Okay. So you just come to the this one over here. Come to this bit over here. So the idea is that uh, you know you have uh, different shades available of different colors, full HDR, and uh, you know you can play around with them. So I'll just uh, you know uh, make a few comments on some of the some of the you know some of the challenges that uh, we've encountered, and uh, how you know the open source community has been uh, of great help to you know mitigate against those challenges. So for instance, you know, we bumped into the challenge of uh, we could not be able to render OpenGL, uh, you know, canvases on uh, HDR, but then thanks to an open source uh, library that is maintained by Google, it's called Angle. Maybe some of you have already, you know, played with it already. So this, you know, this uh, library just translates OpenGL calls to direct 3D calls. And uh, that's how we are able to make it uh, possible in uh, Windows. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing that different pieces contributed by different persons result into the whole application working from end to end. But uh, I'm saying this just to encourage the guys in the room who you know are participating in open source projects that uh, you know the. The impact is is very huge, and it helps to untap a lot of uh, unlocked potential, and uh, you know that's how some of these things are possible today. So thank you very much for the guys contributing to open source projects, and uh, you know keep it up. So I'll open it up to questions. If anyone has a question they would like to ask, I'm happy to answer. So that's a good question. So the question is, uh, he does not have a HDR display, but he would like to, you know, create content that is HDR. So I would love to say yes, it's possible, but uh, with the current uh, technologies that we have in Krita, 
for you to be able to, you know, to be able to even get to the point that you are doing work in HDR, the way that the you know the the, the Windows um, the Windows um, operating system system works is that it should be able to first detect there is availability of HDR in your setup that you're working with. So if that availability is not there, then the HDR features are not turned on. So you cannot assume that uh, you know since I just have an SDR display and uh, I'm just working and I don't want to see it, I will get HDR features. So it's not yet possible, and uh, probably because the, the solution itself is also in its uh, infancy stages, but hopefully, you know, in the near future, these are some things that uh, should be possible. But what's possible is that uh, if you have HDR content, the other, if you flip the problem, which is also a problem to some people, they, you know, artists will be like, okay, I want to make HDR content, but how would people in SDR environment view my content? So thanks to technology, that bit is handled. So if you create a, you know, HDR, let's say animation, and then you distribute it to people with SDR displays, the system, and uh, this happens at hardware level, there's tone mapping, so the HDR content, you know, fits to the, adapts to the current environment that you are running on. But the other way, it's not yet possible. Yeah? Yeah? So what I what I discovered, and uh, I don't know about your phone, but uh, what I discovered, uh, you know, initially in the beginning of the conversation, when I say there's a lot of uh, fake HDR, so what I discovered is that uh, most phones that you know claim to be HDR, they just you know take an overexposed image and an, and an underexposed image, and then they sort of uh, blend the two, come up with a HDR. But if you go to the Details, the devil is the details. If you go to the details, it does not adhere to HDR standards. For instance, you'll find the color space is using is not Rec 2020, for instance. You'll find the, the beat of the, 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 the beat is, uh, is below 10 bit. And it looks like HDR, it's very good to the eye, but then it's not HDR. So for those kind of, uh, when you capture something with your image, with your camera, if it's, um, like most cameras I've seen, phone cameras, that kind of image you are able to at least manipulate with Krita and import it. And uh, what I've seen in the past, Krita guys are working on right now, is if you could take an officially SDR image and sort of translate it to sort of HDR to allow a user to be able to add HDR effects to an existing SDR image, that is possible, and then at the end, you know, it will be a new image in HDR. So that is still, you know, work in progress, something they're doing, but, you know, a direct answer to your original question was like, there's no neat way to do it on Krita right now. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, right now, when I try to merge HDRs, a lot of times, uh, the problem I run into is uh, there's no um, free open source tool that does the merge well. Uh, I think PT GUI is one of the uh, commercial packages. Um, the closest I've found is using Picture Knot, which is like an old, old one. And I think there might be some others. I don't know. Um, do you know if uh, Krita is ever going to get like HDR merging? Kind of like what Photoshop has, but that would actually work. To be honest, I. Yeah, so, so the question was, um, does Krita support merging of HDR images so that in the end, uh, what do you have? So you have different HDR images, and then uh, you want to have one HDR image at the end? Yeah, I can like use Photoshop, but I found yeah. like you can just click the button. And it like oh, I see. Yeah. 
I don't know how Krita handles this, to be honest. But maybe this is something we can have a chat with uh, with the with board, the, the, yeah, the, the Krita guys, and then we can ask. You know, the good thing about most of the feedback and most of the features that they implemented in Krita, they just come, you know, from people. Someone say, can we do this? And they're working on it. So yeah. Is there any other question? Yes, sir. You are able to open the Krita file in your um, in your setup without the um, HDR display, and you're actually able to manipulate it how you want it. It's just that you are not able to add HDR effect to it. As much as it's HDR image with all the properties adhering to HDR standards, your environment has no way to detect that you have HDR capabilities, and as such you will not see the HDR capabilities that Krita offer on that platform. But everything else will be, like for instance, if you received it and then saved it exactly, and then gave it to someone who has got a HDR display, they should be able to still, you know, experience it as it is was done from a guy who had the, 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 the initial setup. You have another question? Yeah? Can you maybe if you're looking for uh, open source HDR merging, then uh, look for Greg Zhao HDR merge. He it's um, rep his repository on GitHub, and he made a script with a nice simple uh, user interface in Python that uses uh, Luminance HDR and uses Blender, and those two combined give you a merged uh, HDR output in EXR file. Last time I checked, it worked for me. So it, it you're welcome. Thank you very much for the for the answer. Anyone who have a question? Okay, I think that's it. So if you want to see more cool HDR demos, and if you want to, you know, play with the application on your own, I welcome you to visit the ASA stand upstairs, and you can get the full experience. So thank you very much for your time and uh, see you shortly in a while in the corridors and everywhere.